What's up, everyone? Welcome to Cracker Season 3, Episode 17. Um, I was going to normally, uh, well, normally, I was going to do a, uh, a review on my Marvel books, because I did the DC last time, but uh, I got a huge hole in. Like I said, it's probably going to be one of my last big holes. Uh, one of the confusion people were asking, like, oh, you're not, you're not getting any holes anymore. No, that's, that's, that's not true. They're just going to be a lot less than what you're going to see now, because um, I'm definitely cutting a lot of out because just can't afford it right now it's there it's getting crazy it's getting very crazy um but before we get into all that i want to thank uh some new subscribers i got one new subscriber who apparently doesn't have a channel or just let me know that someone has subscribed to me so thanks <laughs> um travis michael holland thanks for subscribing and sherpa not hope i got that right thanks for subscribing and i want to thank uh warbound 459 uh, for his contest that I actually won, I'm shocked out of my mind. I thought it was a, I thought he was joking at first. Thought it was an April Fool's thing because it came around the same thing. I'm like, oh man! I was like, uh, he had a little contest. If you can guess what character he was missing from Noggins, uh, you'd win a certain uh, couple of Noggins that he had, and uh, he threw in an extra, which is pretty cool. Um, I got that package. I, I opened it. I didn't go inside yet. I just kind of slipped the, uh, the thing there. So I want to thank uh, Warbound459. Thanks a lot, man. That was really cool of you to have the contest. And I'm still shocked that I won it because uh, one of the characters you gave away is one of the characters I was looking for. Uh, well, actually, I was looking for them all, but there was one in particular that I just thought was really, really cool. Um, let's take a look. My winnings. Uh, <laughs> see? There I am. Love my name and print. <laughs> I'm going to save that for the scrapbook. Uh, grab Zags. Grab Zags. Very cool. I actually had one of these a long time ago, and I won a Loki uh, skateboard, which is pretty cool. Kind of fits. Let's see what's in the... Oh, here we go. Here's the... Uh, some Noggins. Some of the Noggins I won. The Ultra Rare See-Through Spider-Man, which is freaking amazing. Love it. War Machine. Really, really cool. And, uh, yep, there he is. <laughs> This is the one I was looking for for a while. Just I just love the, uh, just love this character, Silver Surfer. Just the the look on his face just reminds me of my fiance. I, I laugh at it all the time. I, I tell her this is what she looks like when she gets up in the morning, all kind of grumpy. <laughs> and the fact that he goes a little surfboard is cool. Um, as for Grab Zag, let's see what's in here. <laughs> oh man, that's that's pretty funny. But I guess it it fits. Maybe I was meant to win the contest. The first grab zag thing I ever got was, like I said, a Loki skateboard, which I packed up. And this one, I <laughs> got a little Loki figure. <laughs> it's cool. It's my namesake, at least part of it anyway, so that's really cool. Uh, again, uh, Warbound459, thanks a lot, man. I appreciate it. It's really cool, Ian, especially throwing in that zag, grab zag thing. That's that's awesome. Uh, definitely fits me. I am Loki Goblin. Um, like I said, I have a huge hole. Uh... <laughs> quite quite a lot actually. It's not a uh, not really in order. I just kind of stacked them, and uh, it's funny because I've, I've mentioned it before. I'm organizing my comic books. I I got them down, organized pretty well. Um, but my problem was I never had them uh, separated. I guess would be a thing like you know divided. You know divider here name of whatever it is divider divider divider, and those things do run up a bit. Because uh, I know when I go to the comic book store, they very rarely have them, so it's a bit of a bitch. And when they do have them, they're expensive. Uh, they're like 15 bucks for like a pack of 10 or some crap like that. Um, so it's insane. So my other solution that I have for temporary, you know, because who knows, uh, is I make my own dividers. I grab a, uh, a package of folders, cut them in half, cut the tab off, put the tab up here. First, you measure everything, make sure it'll fit in the box right, and just high enough to you can see it. And uh, I've been doing that all day, actually, because my uh, my fiance is pretty sick. Uh, I think she's got some kind of a flu, so she's been out of work for a couple of days, and uh, she hasn't been feeling well at all. You know, just and thank God for my immune system, because I, I haven't got it, and my immune system's fighting it off. I get tired a little bit, so I know my body's getting rid of it or trying to keep it away anyway. Um, so that's kind of the thing I look at. I'm like, oh man, I'm getting tired. I must be trying to fight something off. But taking care of her and uh, straining work, straining work, trying to, to pack stuff, move, and then make sure she's all right and go around and around. But it's got to get done. 
Um, one of the cool things, like I said, I got my, my comic hole, plus the, the contest thing was cool. And uh, I made her laugh when I showed the silver surfer. You know, she, she's like, that ain't me. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> but um, I wouldn't let her touch my book. She's like, oh, you got a pack. I'm like, get off, woman. I don't want your germs. <laughs> but um, I'll show you this hole. Like I said, it's in no particular order. And then I'm going to go over a few things. Um, I got Batman Detective Comics number 19, which is a special 80 page spectacular, which cost eight bucks. A little insane. Sorry about the lighting, trying to get it. There we go. I didn't pay eight bucks, thank God. It's the one cool thing, like I said, about Midtown, is they give you a discount. Uh, it was 15% off, and then I had the, I used the code word Ultron. They were giving you 20% off, the 25% off all issues. So, that helped a lot on this one. <laughs> Um, this one looks funny as hell. This is Deadpool number seven. It's kind of making funny, funny, fun of the demon in the bottle, which is cool because it says instead of Marvel now, it says Marvel then. It's pretty cool. Looking forward to reading that one. And uh, I'm loving this first Lantern thing, uh, Green Lantern number nineteen, which is part and line of the uh, Wrath of the First Lantern, which is a cool cover. All the broken uh, Lantern batteries. Pretty cool. Ah, this hopefully will be extremely good like the others. Superior Spider-Man number seven. Yeah, I'm actually trying to keep my voice down a little bit because it's uh, she's she's out cold. So, but you know, I want her to sleep, so I'm trying to. <laughs> but uh, also, I almost forgot. Uh, congrats, congrats, <laughs> congrats to Mongo Stomp Time Zero Seven on the move. Uh, that's very cool. Uh, you got your work cut out for you still, man. I, anyone who's ever moved knows moving is like only half the battle. <laughs> Getting everything together is, is the next part, but uh, that's kind of the fun part. So I'm just kind of, I know you might be a little stressed out, dude, but you just got to try to mellow it. Just be like, all right, man, it'll get done. Don't go too crazy. Uh, me personally, I, I every time I move, like I'm, I'm obsessed with getting everything done. Like right away, I'm like, I want to get everything done so I can just chill, but never do that it just it'll mess with you more uh, my little moving tip which I'm still moving myself I'm, I'm packing I'm doing it the right way like I said I'm kind of going slow I got a nice little time frame so I'm like ah, eh, one box eh, one box I'm not stressing myself out not making myself sick I'm just but anyway back to the hole uh, Thanos rising number one you know Thanos is gonna be a huge bastard this uh, this year and next year especially with the Guardians of the Galaxy uh, his, was it, a first appearance on Iron Man 55 is through the roof. Uh, it's insane how much money that book's going for now. Um, I knew I should have bought that damn thing when I was at the convention. I saw it for like a hundred bucks and I'm like, ah, I just can't get it. And I'm like, ah, now I'm kicking myself. But, um, I got the baby variant, which is friggin' hysterical. Thanos rising number one, the baby variant, where he's in his throne. And he's got the little infinity gauntlet and he's got the little death balloon. That's awesome. That is just awesome. Just reminds me so much of the Infinity Gauntlet book. That's just cool. Uh, this I got because I want to see what happens with Toxin. This is Venom number 33. And this I got, like I said, I'm going to say it with uh, no shame. I got it because it was a number one. That's Constantine number one. Some people are saying good things about it. A lot of people say it sucks. Uh, especially if you follow the character for years and they're like, ah, it's just not the way to go. But like I said, I only bought it because it was a number one. Give it a shot. Uh, the chances of me getting number two, who knows? Because like I said, I'm I'm, I'm cutting a lot of stuff out, and I'm like, ah. besides the point. I finally got this. This finally came in. The baby variant of Guardians of the Galaxy number one. I just thought it was really really funny with Rocket Raccoon, and Groot. <laughs> and this I got because I absolutely love the cover. I didn't get all the uh, the parts to the Atlantis thing, but like I said, this one was just an awesome awesome cover. Aquaman number eighteen. Just amazing. Loved it. Astonishing X-Men number 60, which is part two of the extermination. Basically got that. Like I said, I want to see what the hell is going to happen. And this is part three. This is Age of Apocalypse number 14. I think I only got like two more and then it's done. Um, this I actually got a chance to read. Because uh, when I opened it, I was like, I have to read this one. This all new X-Men number 10. This was really, really cool. Uh, it's basically, um, on the cover, you know, it looks like they're going crazy, but what it is, spoiler alert, 
is a uh, mastermind is they're trying to rob banks and they make mystique Sabretooth, and a couple of the people look like it's the x-men attacking rather than them so that's the point of the cover really and then of course cyclops the older cyclops shows up at uh, jean gray's school for higher learning trying to recruit and everyone's kind of like you know kiss my ass what are you your apple balls showing up basically and the cuckoos you know i hate those characters um, they want to join, and then they have like some mystery person that wants to join, so it's probably going to be Jean Grey. But uh, it was an interesting book. I'm, I'm actually really loving the series. It's very, very cool. So you got a little bit of review after me, after all. Uh, I got a chance to read this one as well, because uh, like I said, I want to see what goes on. This is Age of Ultron, book four. And it's still almost like the WTF moments, like what the hell is going on? And they're just starting to explain what's going on. Uh, Luke Cage kind of fakes turning over She-Hulk to the Vision who's apparently apparently under the control of Ultron from the future now they say and uh, she throws him out the window to try to give him a, a chance and she winds up getting killed and he gets nuked and winds up in the Savage Land and he's basically dying from being nuked and um, they find out that Ultron's in the future and, and this whole big thing is, is going on they're trying to find a way to get there and Black Widow and Moon Knight show up and say we have a way Nick Fury planned, to, planned it you know so we're gonna go to kick his ass um, interesting book, and the the main thing that's crazy about this is there's a character called Angela who's from Spawn, who apparently has been bought by Marvel and will appear in book ten, which I had in advance order already. I figured what the hell just a case. Um, so that's that's the real secret if you want to know about number ten coming around. Alrighty, uh, that should be all my new ones I think, and the rest of these are all back issues. No real order, like I said. Uh, this is Spider Man number fifty three. I got it really dirt cheap. I think it was uh, 50 cents. It does help in fill into the uh, the gaps, which I got a chance to read this one too. Um, it's funny because the, the Clone Saga, the storyline was kind of worthless. You were kind of like, it was almost like a repeat of when the Jackal did it, like back in the, the early 140s of Amazing Spider-Man. Um, but the Ben Riley character is actually kind of interesting. I always liked his costume. I thought it was kind of cool. And the fact that he had impact webbing and stingers and all sorts of crazy stuff. And basically he fights Venom in this and kicks Venom's ass uh, in a roundabout sort of way. But it was cool. Like I said, it fills in my Spider-Man gap. <laughs> and this is the one book I never got uh, when I was collecting them. Just happened to have missed it every time. Uh, this is The Return of Bruce Wayne. This is number two of six. I have all the others. I actually have number three signed. But I never had number two. And for a uh, dollar twenty-five, it was worth it. So now I have the complete Return of Bruce Wayne. Now this this was beyond worth it. This only cost a buck, dollar, which is really cool uh, for what this is. Uh, I saw it a couple times in some people's uh, uh, videos, and I had no idea that that was the first appearance of the character as you know whatever. But I was like, I have to have that. Maybe I can find it cheap. And I went on eBay, and it wasn't cheap. And Midtown, like I said, they do have their good points. Um, had it, and it was only a dollar, especially with my, my discount. It was like 70-something like cents with the thing I had. Uh, and that is Batman number 442, which is the first appearance of Tim Drake as Robin. Very cool. I don't even know at the bottom. It was pointed out uh, by another YouTuber. So at the bottom, it's got Nightwing and uh, Batman and I believe Alfred. That's pretty cool, though. Not bad for less than a buck. And this I thought was really cool. This is, uh, I don't know what the hell number this is. Um, <laughs> Batman number 515. It's an, it's a black cover, but what it is, you can't really see it with the light. Let's see if I can put a flashlight on it. There you go. Batman's kind of in there. You can kind of see him. See? He's in, embedded. It's just really, really, really cool. When I saw that, I'm like, oh my god. And for less than a dollar, I was like, I have to get it. It has to be done. I was in kind of a Batman kick. And I saw this one, too. This was less than a dollar. This is Batman number 451. That's just an awesome, awesome Joker-looking cover. So that's my, my little Batman kick that I went on. <laughs> and this I finally got. Finally completed the series. A little four-part limited series. Uh, I have multiple copies of number three and four, but I never had number one. So this is the Terminatrix... Objective Avengers number one. It's like a foil cover like everything else was back in the 90s. Pretty cool. Near Mint, less than a dollar. And uh, of course I got number two, which I never had. Near Mint, less than a dollar. 
So now we have the complete thing of that. Very cool. Moving on. Amazing Spider-Man number 550. This is the first appearance of Menace, I believe. And of course, Jackpot. Filling in my Amazing Spider-Man stuff. This one actually wasn't too bad. Yeah, it was a, a buck ninety with a discount. Um, like I said before, Amazing Spider-Mans are going through the friggin' roof. And uh, it was kind of safe to say, like, you know, a lot of people that I know that do collect Spider-Man that aren't on the community or in YouTube that just collect them. We were kind of talking about it, like it's amazing how it's just going through the roof and then everyone's like, ah, oh, we're just going to turn our attention to the other Spider-Man titles. And now because of that, they're going through the roof, which is a pain in the ass, especially when you're trying to, uh, when you're on a quest, you know, to complete the uh, the runs. I'm like, oh man, I was like, now I can't even go after Spider-Man or Web of Spider-Man or Spectacular because now that's going through the roof. Um, but anyway, I got a few of them. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man 540 fills in a nice sizable gap ahead. And this is an, an annual, I believe. This just looked really, really cool and had to get it. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man 96. Uh, 64 big pages as Blast from the Past. Osborne Intrigue, Craven's Revenge, Captain Stacy and Gwen, The Return of Aunt May, and The Black Costume. That's just a cool looking cover. And this was like a buck, buck 80 or something like that with a discount. And this, this is funny, I wasn't going to get this, but um, a friend of mine <laughs> was kind of laughing at me because he's like, oh, you know, I, I know you, you know, you collect the old Amazing Spider-Man, I collect Amazing Spider-Man. And uh, he's like, yeah, but he's like, you know, you, you were claiming on your YouTube thing that you have all the McFarlane uh, Spider-Mans. I'm like, yeah. I was like, I got, you know, 298, you know, through his run, then I have all his Spider-Man runs, uh, his regular Spider-Man. And I have his Incredible Hulk, you know, and he's like, ah, yeah, but you don't have this one. And uh, I saw it on a Midtown, and it was really cheap, so I figured the hell what it was a dollar. Uh, the Amazing Spider-Man Skating on Thin Ice, number one, which is a McFarlane cover. So now I have all of McFarlane stuff. <laughs> I don't think his work's inside. I think it's just the cover, but now I, now I truly have all the Spider-Man, so uh, my friend Eric can kiss my ass. <laughs> Kidding. Um... I got this one, less than a dollar. Daredevil number 290. I love Bullseye. I think he's awesome. So that was a cool cover. Cool price. Uh, this is another one that was less than a dollar. Uh, Spider-Man, like I said, filling in gaps. And I'm trying to get them now. The Spider-Man titles and the web of Spider-Man titles. And Spectacular before they really do, you know, go to the point where it's ridiculous. But this is Spider-Man number... Might as well put some order. 32. The Punisher. 33 less than a dollar uh, number 44 that's an awesome looking cover that's what kind of drew me I'm like oh man that's awesome oh, I don't have that one either <laughs> number 47 another awesome looking cover these were all less than a dollar which I was very happy with number 48 which I believe is the death of Demo Goblin and this this was a like I said I've said it before I'm not, not really a snob about it but sometimes I am, especially when it comes to Spider-Man. Uh, this was a, this was actually a, a buck fifty, and uh, I wasn't gonna buy it because it was a very good, and they didn't have any higher grade ones. And I was like, ah, you know, I really don't want to get it. But I was like, you know what, for the price, and I did see a higher grade one, but it was like, you know, like eight bucks. I'm like, this is not worth it. Um, this is Spider-Man number fifty, and it's pretty cool. It's got Craven Hunter in his eyes. And um, it's a very good grade, which is kind of accurate. Usually they're not, but it's got a couple of dings here and there, but it's not too bad, actually. So I'm not really too pissed off, especially for what I paid for it. Ah, Web of Spider-Man number 40. Fills in a nice gap. Now I have, uh, what the hell is it? I think I have one through, oh man, one through 60 complete. And, uh... This other one, Web of Spider-Man number 80, fills a nice gap, because then I have from, uh, I think from 70 to 100 complete, so I'm, I'm almost, almost there. You know, I'm missing a couple ones in the 60s, and I'm missing, obviously, a couple ones after the 100s, and I'm done with Web of Spider-Man. Uh, I just gotta grab a couple annuals, I think, and then that's it. And last but not least in my haul, I've said this a billion times, that I was gonna get a new one, and uh, it was just never the right price. But this was 50 cents, and I couldn't turn it down. Um, 
This is West Coast Avengers number 36. And why did I get this? And why am I saying I've been getting it, trying to get it for a while? This is actually the first comic book I ever got uh, that I've shown before uh, in my, my bin. But it just, it's so worn from being read and so destroyed that I wanted to get a better copy just to have. So that is it. This will never be read. It's just going to be put in the, you know, to the side. It's memories. Um, that will do it for my haul. Like I said, massive haul, a lot of time. Um, but a couple of things I want to throw in there. <laughs> People have been commenting on my WrestleMania predictions. Uh, my friend was kind of outraged. He's like, how do you, how, why do you say CM Punk's going to win? You know, how is he going to beat The Undertaker? Um, I really hope he doesn't. I mean, I do like CM Punk. Uh, I think he's cool and everything. Uh, but he's, a, you know, he was a nice guy when I met him. Undertaker was a nice guy when I met him too. But I really hope Undertaker does win because he's, like I said, he's my favorite. Uh, I, I'd love to see him go out undefeated. But if you just look at a lot of the signs... It just doesn't look like he's gonna beat beat CM Punk. You know, he's now he's weakened from the urn. You know, the whole thing getting tossed upside down. You know, no ashes, stuff like that. He took a beating, and usually what WWE does, if you really watch them all the time, usually whoever gets beat on Monday Night Raw, like you know whoever loses or gets beat up, whatever, it is, is the winner of that pay per view. They always seem to have that. But um, this is supposed to be from what I'm, I'm I've heard. Like I said, a couple friends of mine pick up these rumors, and usually they're true. And uh, another friend of mine actually works for WWE, and he kind of tells me a little bit of storylines here and there. Um, but I'm not going to give away any, anything, because he says the same thing. He's like, even when he tells me some of the storylines, uh, he says, he goes, it changes at the drop of a hat. He's like, you know, like, man can turn around and say, you know what, I don't think this is going to work. We're going to switch it. And right before, he, he said that he's seen people... They have everything down pat, and right before they walk through the curtain, McMahon pulls you aside and says, hey, you know what, we're not doing this storyline, we're going to go with plan B, this storyline. So, you never know. You really don't never ever know what's going to really happen. Um, like I said, I hope Undertaker wins. I, I, I'm, I just want to see him just, you know, at least get that cool thing, you know, he was undefeated at WrestleMania. Leave his, you know, let him have his streak, man. That's just all the work he's done for WWE. He, he deserves to have an undefeated streak at WrestleMania. Uh, he's an awesome character. Like I said, really cool guy when I met him. Um, but the problem is McMahon is, is almost like trying to pave the way for the new the new generation. That's what the my friend at uh, WD was saying is that that's what McMahon's focus is now is that he wants a whole new set of you know the wrestlers coming in and he wants the old schoolers to kind of pass the torch. And that looks like what's going to happen. Undertaker's supposed to lose to CM Punk so CM Punk can be put over they usually call it. And, you know, brag about how he beat The Undertaker and made him retire and all that stuff. And, um, same thing with, like, Triple H and Brock Lesnar. I don't see Triple H losing, because it just kind of seems like he wants to get that revenge win. Um, but I think that Shawn Michaels is definitely going to put a huge part into it. He's going to, something's going to happen. You're going to see something be screwed up, you know. He, he's going to kick Triple H or something, and, you know, but who knows. I still think Triple H is going to win that one. The Rock and Cena, everyone keeps telling me that I'm, I'm wrong. The Rock is going to win. I don't see The Rock winning as much as I like The Rock. I'd, I'd love to see him win. Um, it's just not... Not that it's not good for his for WWE's business. It just seems like it's kind of pointless because The Rock, if he wins, he's never going to really wrestle. He'll be at the main events. Stuff like that. And what kind of champion do you want that never shows up? You know, he'll show up, he'll talk, and he'll leave. And stuff, which is cool. It's funny. But, you know, a lot of people hate Cena. I don't know why everyone hates Cena. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of him, but I don't think he's that bad. Um... But I think Cena's going to beat The Rock some some way. There's going to probably be a controversial thing. but And uh, one I didn't touch on that people were asking is Del Rio versus uh, Swagger. I think Del Rio's going to win. Um, but I think it's going to be uh, something where there's like a screw up. And it's like, you know, like say like uh, Swagger beats Del Rio. But they didn't catch it or something like that. You know, something like that where it's going to have like a rematch. Who knows? Um... Another thing I want to talk about real fast, like I said, this is a long video. Uh, I was watching, I got the tail end of the comic uh, talk podcast, which I have to tell everyone out there who's, if you're just, if you're new to the community or if you're, you know, new to collecting comics, check them out. Uh, it's very cool. You know, you, you'll always learn something. You know, you, you'll sit there and, and the people that are on there are amazing and they, they know their stuff. They know great deals of, of details with, with comics and what's coming out and then, and uh, issues and what to look for and stuff like that. It's just a great show to watch. Uh, I believe they're usually every Friday or Saturday, give or take. But um, it's really cool. 
But one thing they touch on, like I said, I got the tail end of it. Um, like I said, I've been taking care of my fiance, so it's taking a little bit of time. Is they were talking about the thing that I was always pissed about and I made videos about is how comic book stores don't have enough stuff to, well, comics to supply their demand. You know, supply and demand kind of thing. You know, like I've said, uh, they were actually talking about Batman Incorporated number 8 where Damien dies and that it was impossible to find. You know, a lot of people couldn't get it. Uh, some people on, on this community were like, you know, my, my store has, you know, dozens and dozens of them and there's no problem. Whereas somebody like myself, the stores only have the subscriptions, um, which is a bitch. And uh, the thing that sucks is that the two stores I mainly go to aren't taking more subscriptions. Like, they're kind of full up, I guess. They've had their share or fill or whatever it is. So it's kind of, uh, you're screwed. So, like, even if I wanted to do a subscription, be like, you know, this is the titles that I want. This ain't gonna happen. And, uh, it blows because no matter how early you get there, when it's, like, you've seen it on my videos, when I get there, the store opens, they're out of them. You know, it's all automatically filled into the, uh, the subscription boxes. And, and it's, uh, it's funny because, um, they touched on it on the show that they were saying that uh, the comic book stores I want to look out to be, like, the bad guy. They blame the distributor like oh well Marvel didn't or DC didn't send us enough you know we ordered you know 400 of them and we only got 50 of them you know and they're all subscriptions and we're waiting for our next shipment which it's usually blowing smoke up your ass it's basically they're like hey you know what we made our money we don't care you know up yours wait till we get in the second sh uh, printing or the third printing and then you know which is stupid because I could see why you know they want to play it safe they want to have, like, you know, if it does well, they're like, oh, you know, we can, we'll get the second printing, and then people will buy the second printing. But it sucks, because you'll see them, especially in my comic book stores, you'll see them, you know, you try to get the first printing of something, you won't get it. The second printing will come around, and they'll have, like, you know, two or three hundred of them. And then they usually wind up having, like, tons of back issues of it, and they they oh, we have plenty of back issues. And then they charge you, like, you know, ten dollars for a four dollar book anyway, because it's a back issue now, and they bagged and boarded it. But, um... I just find it stupid that they'll, you know, they'll over-order on second and third printings, but they'll under-order on the first printings. What can you do? Like, I, I could do a whole video again on, on just how that pisses me off to no end. Um, and that's one of the reasons uh, that I'm, that I do like Midtown, is that, uh, but you gotta, it's the same thing, early bird gets the worm, man. You gotta advance order stuff with them, too. Uh, especially, like, on the days when they have, like, on Wednesdays, they put the new stuff up. You gotta be like right there waiting, otherwise you're gonna have stuff just gone. You know, I've seen stuff, for instance, the Batman and Red Robin number 19 that's coming out. <clears throat> Excuse me. Which has, I think, like the Kelly, Carrie, girl, Carrie, whatever is the new Robin. Um, that thing, when I ordered it, just as the, as the, the, uh, the website changed into the, the new, the new release stuff, like the new next week stuff, ordered it real quick placed my, you know, placed my order, got out of there, checked out, went back in, two minutes later, it was sold out, completely gone, I was like, wow, uh, so there you go, that's, that's kind of the point, but, um, it really does suck, like, they said, uh, a person on there had touched on it, uh, I can't remember who, but they said that it just blows that you have to, you can't just walk into a comic store and get your damn book that you want, like, it's just kind of, like, if I was looking for this, like, they were saying that the, uh, um, the through all the hunt, you know, like you gotta, there's, I think Travis said it, um, that, you know, you can, you can find the books if you, if you work hard enough for it, but you think about it, like, not to sound like a prick my, my, myself, but I'm, it's gonna sound like it anyway, I don't want to have to piss my gas money away to go to, you know, 15 different stores and find one book that should be on the shelves, and like, if it's a back issue, that's a different story, that is actually is cool, you know, try to hunt it down, get it for a good price, but that's not really the comic book store's fault, like, you know, if, if this, this back issue, I'm looking for it, and, you know, that first store didn't have it, it's a back issue. It didn't just come out. It should not be such a bitch to find, you know, like, like I said, like, if, if this came out, you know, Wednesday, I should be able to go to a comic book store, any one of them, and pick it up, but, like they said, uh, a lot of people go in there, they'll pick up, like, even the certain stores that have, that actually have the issues, somebody will walk in there, and they'll buy 15, 20 copies of the damn thing, and then... Somebody who actually wants to read it and not try to, you know, make a fortune is screwed. Because now they're like, great, now I can't get it. I have to go buy an eBay for, you know, 50-something dollars. So, it's a bit of a bitch. And like I said, I can go on and on about this whole thing, but I'm not gonna. Anyway, um, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. If you like what you see, please hit the like button. If you like what you see, subscribe. Definitely check out uh, Warbound459. I'm gonna put a link to his channel in the uh, thingy. 
Well, you know what it is by now. So check him out, and definitely check out uh, the Comic Talk podcast. I'm going to throw their little link in there, too, because it's really worth it. Like I said, everyone in there is really, really cool. And uh, thanks to all my new subscribers. I appreciate it. And uh, maybe my next video, I don't know, maybe I will do a, uh, a huge review. But, um... <laughs> And that's, that's going to be one hell of a review. Like I said, I still have the stack of Marvel that I didn't review uh, yet. So much to do. And now uh, I'd have a whole stack like this to go over. And that's that's rough. That is really rough. So um, instead of me going to go read this since it's so late at night, I'm going to go watch some MacGyver because uh, he's the man. And uh, I'll catch you for one later. It's not the size of man kit that matters. It's what you have in it. And what I have in it right now is a whole load of books that I'm going to have to file and read and uh, sort and, and label, but uh, before I mess around with any of that stuff, check my fiance and go watch some MacGyver. Later.